alaikum and welcome to Ramadan Health Guide. My name is Amna Tati and I'm an Associate Nutritionist. The aim of this show is for us to be able to provide you with all the information, knowledge and support that you need to be able to improve your health and uh, improve your health and well-being in the long run. It's important for us to find out how food and diet and health can uh, and the choices that we have and make impact our health in the long run. And the aim of this show is for us to wage through that confusion to find out, well, what are the things that are good for us and what are the things that will help us improve our health and well-being in the long run. Today's topic is all about hunger. A lot of the times, eating is out of habit. Or a lot of the times we eat because we're bored, because we're stressed, or because we're happy, or because we're sad, or because we're always used to eating at that time, or because everyone else is eating at the time. However, if you think about it, if we think if we eat at each at each of those um, occasions, that is too much eating in one day. The only time that we should be eating is to satisfy a physical hunger. This is what fasting in the month of Ramadan teaches us. That when we eat, it should only be to satisfy a physical hunger and nothing else. If we eat when we're bored, then we should try and find other things to do um, rather than eating. If we, if we find that how we cope with stress is by eating, then again, it's about trying to find other things that we can do to cope with those things. Now, on the short term, if we do use food as a coping mechanism, that could be um, manageable for our body in the short term. However, if we're constantly using food to cope with certain, uh, certain emotions, that will not help us in the long term. So fasting really forces you to assess your relationship with food and what are the different ways um, that you use food to cope? Um, what are the different ways food is used by you to cope with certain things in your everyday life. So when you do break your fast, it's actually because you're physically hungry. You are, you're aware of those hunger cues. A lot of the times out of the month of Ramadan, we don't feel those things. We eat out of habit. We always have breakfast at the same time every morning rather than because we're actually hungry. We eat because everyone else is eating at that time. So it's important to make certain changes outside the month of Ramadan from, the, from whatever you learn from fasting and apply that in your everyday life. So for example, if it's your breakfast, try and have your breakfast whenever you're actually physically hungry rather than because you always eat at that time. If you know, for example, you're going out with your friends or your family in the evening for a meal, plan around that so you're actually hungry by that time. So fasting is like that reset button that allows your body to and your mind to become aware of when you are actually hungry versus the times that you're not. So if you're not fasting um, outside of the month of Ramadan, for example, just listen to your body. Are you actually physically hungry? Is it the type of hunger that you feel when you're fasting? If it's not, then try and find other ways to manage your hunger by satisfying all of the different um, feelings or emotions that you may be going through. Remember, these are all skills. You need to be practicing these on a regular basis for you to become better at them. The more aware you become of your body, the more your mind and body, you'll, the more um, you'll choose certain things that help you to satisfy those for longer periods of time. Thank you for joining us um, about the end today's topic. And hopefully now you're more aware that we should only be eating to satisfy a physical hunger which we do during the month of Ramadan, after the month of Ramadan is, what, is when you can apply that skill as well. Thank you for joining us and Ma'as Salaamah.